Hey, welcome back. Another day, another vlog. Great to have you all back on this Thursday. A very, very slow tech day, news day. We've got a few things we're going to talk about. Um, yeah, and that's about it. It's a very quiet week. Um, even like the big guys, like your John Prosser, he's he's literally coming out and going, oh, I've got nothing. Very, very strange. Um, there is a few little tidbits we're going to get into, um, but I did want to remind you tomorrow night, new video, I'll put the premiere video or the new video coming up, the day 12 of the South Coast trip. I'll put the premiere, I'll lock that in tonight so you can remind, do, put the reminder on for yourself for tomorrow. So that'll be out. So that's something good for. And then obviously I'm still just editing photos for next week's videos. So getting ready for that. So getting some, got some, yet again, another amazing amount of photos to get through. It's going to be another tough, tough job to select which ones I put in. And that's the hardest thing. It's, it's sort of been good with Instagram. I'd sort of do that one a day uh, type scenario and put one photo a day because I've got so many good ones and it's 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 sort of hard. I don't know. I think I'm, and I think that's probably the when you sort of know you, as a photographer, it's you see the the big guys on the channels. They often maybe do one put one photo or two photos up for a, for a video. And they really go in depth, and I'm I'm not sure if I if that's something I I actually enjoy telling the story and then showing showing more of that area. I might I might get one or two like blinder shots, some a bucket list shot, I guess you'd you'd call it. But there's also there's other photos that sort of give you a feel for the area and and what you what you what I'm walking through and what I'm getting to see. I mean, one or two photos could definitely not describe some of the amazing places I've had the privilege of uh, being able to visit or visit and, and see when well, there's probably only been a, maybe a handful or less uh, people actually seen it in the whole ever. So I'm pretty lucky in that regards due to where I am and where I work. So, and I, and I, and I really want to be able to sort of show this area and how beautiful it is. I think I think I've said it a few times. Australians are terrible, terrible, of telling people how good they've got it or what how good we are. We're not really a. We have tall poppy syndrome here in Australia. Everyone's heard of that. If you're a gun and you tell everyone you're good, we'll cut you down to the knees every time. And I I actually completely agree with that. Um, I don't. You shouldn't go around telling everyone how good you are. You, your deeds should tell everyone how good you are. What you do on the field, in sports, in jobs, career. Uh, I'm a firm believer of you shouldn't have to tell everyone how good you are. If you have to tell everyone how good you are, you're obviously not good enough. That's my belief um, from my sporting career. And uh, yeah, so and as, and but I think that also goes over to our. Um, our tourism in Australia, we're not very good at selling our, our beautiful country. We have the most amazing country. You see wherever people spend ten to $20,000 to go do a shoot in other parts of the world. And we've got places just as comparable to that, I believe. Uh, I'm a firm believer of that. Uh, Tasmania, south coast of WA, Queensland, the Territory, there's Karangini, it's half an hour away. It's ridiculous, a ridiculous spot, bucket list central, and I can't even get to it, <laughs> which is really, really frustrating. But it, we have some of these amazing places, and unfortunately, because we're terrible at self-promoting this beautiful country, a lot of people miss out on getting to come and see it. Um, so I guess, and it's hard, even worse now, COVID, we're definitely not going to be advertising it. But look, I hope down the road, once the vaccines all do what they need to do, we, we get uh, back to a manageable position. I think that's where we're probably ever going to be, like, like the flu, like polio, like every other major disease in history. We, you never win. You get to a position of management where you can manage it, control it with uh, vaccines, with medicine. You control how it affects 
your population. So hopefully we get that back to that area in the next 12 months. That would be ideal for everyone, I think. That would be the best possible scenario. It may take 24 months, hopefully not any longer than that because that will really, really crush a lot of businesses and a lot of people. So see how we go. But look, when we get to that stage and everyone can travel again, that's obviously the biggest thing. Um, I hope that you do some of these videos will inspire you to maybe think about Australia because the beauty about Australia is our dollar is crap. <laughs> we have a crap dollar. If you're from US and you're coming to Australia, you're going to get 20, 30% extra on your dollar value. So you're going to do really well. Europe's the same. Uh, the Euro smashes ours. So like coming here is actually going to be like fairly decent. Uh, we're not the cheapest country in the world, but we have fantastic food. We have some of the most amazing places to go and visit, beaches, photo shoots and all that areas, places that are unexplored still that people don't know about um, compared to, say, going to Iceland or the um, <clears throat> Antarctica and all those other places. There's, there's still amazing places around the world that I want to get to as well because it's not where I am used to. But uh, I still think there's some great places here. So I hope some of these videos might inspire you to go, well, hey, yeah, I've never heard of that. That looks amazing. I'd really love to go there. So hopefully that's – and that's part of landscape and that's probably why I do put more shots in that I, than maybe the one or the two and, and I, that's sort of my reasoning. I thought I'd just sort of explain that a bit while we had a bit of time together. Uh, thanks for popping by. Hope you're, you're all well. We'll be over from the podcast, Instagram, Facebook, the website – hope that's looking good. I went and double-checked all my work that I did the other day and it's, it looks heaps better. So super wrap with that. If you haven't checked out the website, links down below. Go check it out. Let me know what I need to do on there. If there's photos in the merch store that you want me to put in from a certain video, let me know. Happy just to whack them up on uh, Printful. It's a really easy way to do it and I can get them out to you. I am actually in the process of looking at... Uh, doing some large prints and looking at different options there that I might be able to source like proper big prints out instead of just the little 8 by 10s that I think they do from Printful. So, yeah, go check it out. Let me know what you think. Uh, it would be great to get some feedback on that as well. Now, um, we're going to talk a couple of things, just nothing majorly big today, no big releases or anything, but some, I guess some good news. Um, Canon Rumours, uh, they've got some... Well, they've talked to their people, their people that know what's happening in Canon, and apparently the R3 should be slated in a September release. Now, we've heard probably for the last three or four months through Canon Rumours about the big lens release uh, in that third quarter, the fourth quarter. Now that the R3 has been pushed back, it's going to be interesting to see if Canon Rumours thinks that this will then affect that big lens release. You know, we talked about like 10 to 15, 14, I think it's maybe 14 lenses getting released all at once. Um, how that's going to affect that. Uh, look, there's chips in lenses, believe it or not. You've got motors, you've got uh, focusing motors and all that. There's probably chips and stuff in there. I'm not sure if they're probably major processes or anything like that. But at the moment, I wouldn't put it off all those lenses being obviously pushed back as well. So I'll, uh, I'll flick him off a message and uh, see if he's got any updates in, in obviously now with the R3 being pushed back to September, will that affect that uh, big camera show and all those lenses getting released that we've been sort of anticipating. So that's, that's actually something I think all Canon photographers are pretty excited about. The R3 is something to be excited, but that's really cost-wise, that's up there for the pros. Um, the little guys like myself uh, are probably more interested in the lenses and what we can do with the current system we've got and how we can better get get some advantages out of some nice glass that we can afford. So, um, yeah, I'll see what I can find out and get back to you on that. But I, I'm sort of hoping that it doesn't affect it. But I've got a little bit of an inkling that, yeah, now we get them back a qu full quarter for the R3. Maybe we might get a Christmas, a big Christmas announcement for some lenses or a first quarter of 2022. They just go stuff 20, just right off 2021 like we did 20. And let's see if we can have another fresh start in 2022. I would not be surprised by that. Um, OnePlus, we know what they've done in the phone world. They went gangbusters, come in, affordable, cost 
value for money, quality phones. On the Android system, unfortunately, the it, wouldn't it be great? I, I think I said in one of my t uh, tweets today, wouldn't it be great to be able to buy another bit of hardware that runs Mac OS system? Wouldn't it be great if Mac could see it in their $2 trillion soul to offer out their Mac OS and let other people use that? How amazing would that be? Licensing out to another hardware company. So you could have a... Sony Xperia 1.3 running Mac OS, uh, or you can have an Android, what one do you want? Uh, do you want the new Samsung Flip in OS, or would you like it in Android, sir? We can, ha I'll pack, I've got a couple of OS ones here, but I've got only one left of the Android version. Which one would you like? That's, that's a future I'd love to see. And surely they've got $2 trillion, they're worth $2 trillion. How much money do they need? How much control over everything? It, surely that's the future. I don't know. It'd be, it's it's nice future. It's a nice vision, but I doubt it. But look, OnePlus is getting into tablets. Uh, they've done the phones. They've done watches. Uh, I think they might be going into headphones as well down the track and some other bits and pieces, but they're getting into tablets. Tablets is a tricky game. I don't think... Realistically, and and I'd hate. I know I'm an Apple person, but I I I really think that no one's come really close to an Apple. I've used Samsungs and stuff uh, on planes. Virgin used to use the Samsung versions, and they're pretty average, to say the least. I haven't seen another tablet that's really in the same league as an iPad. Um, Apple really has a lockdown how that system works, and what they can do with it. And I think it's, look, it's going to be a tough, it's a tough segment to go up against Apple and anything. OnePlus did really well with their phones and catapulted them into a household name. And I think if anyone's going to have a crack, they're fresh, young, they've, they've got, they're full of energy and, and they've got that vibe about them. They, they've got that young feel and fresh, fresh vibe to them. I think if anyone's can do it, they, they could be the ones that could have a crack. And I mean, it's, it's just a, just a tablet, but I think it that it's that operating system works so well on a portable mobile device. I mean, they Apple invented the portable mobile device pretty much with a with a iPhone. It, that was like the one that took off, and that system really worked well, and it worked well in the iPad, and they were there first, and everyone else has had to catch up, and obviously they can't use the same same thing. Um, but yeah, you, you never know. This could be the one to uh, really take it to Apple and give them a crack. So look uh, look out for that in, the, I guess, in the next 12 months. I'm sure we'll hear some more on it. It uh, won't be too far away. They seem to work pretty fast and quick. Um, yeah, what iteration we do get of it. Uh, well, yeah, it won't take too long to find out how they go. Now, uh, a company called Nothing. Uh, it's backed by a few big players. Even people like Casey Neissat are one of the investors in it. Got a heap of big investors. Um, but... Company's called Nothing. They've got some one of their basically their first product come out is a set of headphones, some buds. Now yeah, they look pretty cool. They're see-through case, so you can see all the wiring inside. And yeah, that looks pretty cool. That's a funky, great little fresh, new fresh idea. Not just white or coloured or anything like that. Clear, see-through. Yeah, that's a good vibe. Definitely, I think that'll sell some just on that. Uh, noise cancelling and ninety-nine bucks US. So. Going to be interesting to see how they well they go. This is their first major go. They're, again, they're one of these new fresh upstarts like OnePlus. I guess similar sort of a thing. Uh, OnePlus, fresh, new ideas, new new ways to look at things, uh, bringing a different, different sort of way to sell stuff to their customers, to get customers. I think they're going to get a lot of customers. Uh, that price point, 99 bucks, if the noise cancelling is decent um, and if it, they're good sounding, set of headphones they'll do pretty well it's a it is a tough market you've got your your sony's and your apples are pretty much on top then you've got your bose and then you sort of come down to a bigger bigger field around that area um and yeah look i think they'll be pretty cool 27th of july they're going to be released um 99 bucks we already know the price we'll hear more about the specs and stuff closer to the release date i'm sure 
There's, the website doesn't have too much on there. You would, you'll see the thumbnail and the photo. That's pretty much all we've got at the moment, uh, other than the price. So interesting way, again, they told us the price first before it's even any of the specs or any of the, like the, yeah, anything, anything about the item um, other than what it looks like. So it's, a, again, that new fresh way of looking at it and a different sort of a feel to the company. So something new, sometimes it's good, We'll see how well they go. Be another one to watch. So 27th of July, they'll they'll have their big release and we'll definitely cover that for you. Speaking of the headphones, I have had some feedback. I think I said to you the other day, my little Zen pods going really well, except for the noise cancelling. That's the only issue I've had, just doesn't seem to work. I've contacted Zendua, they got straight back to me. So look, great to see them getting back to me. They're contacting their tech team to try and give me some things to try. Maybe it's my user error. I wanna at least give them the chance to throw some stuff back at me first before I give you a final verdict on them. Uh, but you know, at the moment, that's all I'm really waiting to hear back from. Uh, I should know in the next day or two if they've got something else I can try, see if, there's, if it's just my pair that's not working or this is something this silly old bastard's doing wrong. Who knows? Um, so hopefully it's not user error and I don't look like an idiot. <laughs> and that's why I'm holding back my review, full review on that. But uh, look, currently they're going well. They, I think the, the best thing I've noticed about them is they're just so light you actually don't feel them in the ears compared to my big uh, Beats headphones, over-ear headphones. After like an hour of them on, you can you feel the pressure on your head. Um, and having those buds in, I can see why a lot of people have gone down the buds track because you just don't have that. That it's very annoying to me. I can't actually, I can't stand it over the head. It is quite annoying. Uh, even though the sounds tend, it is better. A uh, lot louder, a lot more grunt and power in them, obviously, because they're a bigger unit. Um, yeah, but it's nice having just that little light feel to it and it's just a tiniest, tiny, it's even heaps smaller than the AirPods. So, very cool in that regards, but I will keep you up to date as I find out back once the tech people have got back to me. Now, um, a new little one from BMW. They're getting into the electric scooter game. Uh, not a cheap entry, but a pretty funky looking beast you'll see on the photo there on the thumbnail. Uh, it's called the CE04. Electric scooter, 31 kilowatts, 120 kilometers an hour. That's plenty. That's pretty darn cool. Um, it's got auto stability control, dynamic traction control, ABS brakes. Um, so that's actually really good. I'm a long time BMX rider, uh, but when you get on an electric, when you get on a, something that's got some weight in it, a little bit of grunt, you're gonna be on the road with cars. You, you need to, I guess, especially at that entry level, you wanna get people on electric bikes and electric scooters. You need to make it as safe as possible and make it, I guess, as easy to ride as possible. It's you're not looking for that Harley sort of big hog sort of control and manhandle it around. You want something to get on there and just squeeze the trigger and go and get get from A to B. So I think the stability control and the traction control is going to be pretty darn handy on that. Plus ABS brakes will, uh, you know, I guess put people's minds a little bit more at ease to have a crack at a scooter. So that's pretty cool. 10-inch uh, TFT screen on there to run all your features. Um, it'll also do phone charging, so you have your plug your phone in. Obviously, your maps and stuff will come via your phone into the TFT, so that's pretty cool. You'll be able to cover all that. Uh, 130 kilometer range, kilometer range. That's pretty good. Um, you can get little electric scooters that do that now, but obviously this is a nice kickback, sick, brrr, cruise to work, very chillaxed. Uh, do all your, if you if you don't want to buy a car and go through that, the expenses of Rego, Rego will be cheap on this. Um, probably just need a basic motorcycle license, I'm assuming, here in Australia. But look, I think it'll do pretty well. Um, 8.9 kilowatt battery, 12,000 US dollars though, so a little bit exy. Um, you can get a Honda Posty bike for about five grand, six grand, I think, new. Maybe, maybe a little bit more, but that's like brand new, the latest one. And they're really, really frugal, and they're, again, automatic, Super easy to ride. So it's a lot of coin. It is a BMW, obviously. So, you know, I understand it's not going to be the super cheapest. But uh, look, I think it's definitely cool. More bigger brands get into that range, into the electric scooter side. 
you get the competition, the prices drop, the quality ups, all those sort of things. So that flow on effect will come into it. So pretty darn cool and look, it looks good. There's no doubt they've got a good looking little beast there and I think uh, it will sell reasonably well. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. And last but not least, <clears throat> Mr. Biden, the current US president, is going, putting a few little fighting things out there. He is now putting into law or, or put in the process to get it actioned into law, the right to repair. Now, this has been an ongoing thing against pretty much Apple. Uh, obviously, it covers people like John Deere and a few other big businesses that have sort of resisted that. Uh, they've tried to keep everything in-house. They didn't want other people, third parties, to med meddle with their stuff. Well, it looks like it's going to become a law, at least in the USA. Um, I think that's sort of good because, again, it makes the costs, the cost of being in that ecosystem and Apple uh, is pretty large and intensive. So, and I think, and unfortunately, they've got their they've got their money. Like they're two trillion dollar company. Surely they can throw a dog a bone here and there and let these little guys that are probably tech savvy or ex ex people that work for them maybe go out and start their own business. You know, that's they should be supporting that to to little businesses do more for the community than big businesses. It's a known feature, known fact. Definitely here in Australia, small businesses commit more to the economy than large big businesses and miners and all that. They don't have the say of the big businesses because they don't throw money and bribe people like big business does, big business does. But small businesses, small family-owned businesses, single owner operators like myself with this business, um, put their heart and soul into building something that they're proud of and to look after their families. And I think this gives some more opportunity, allows for more job, job growth. Even teenage kids can open up a business and repair phones and stuff like that. So I think Apple should really get on board and, and really get on into this. I think it'd be a, it's a great thing to do and I think they should really have joined forces. And good to see Biden doing it. Uh, how long it'll take to get into effect and how they'll go um, enforcing it, I guess, is the next stage of that process. I don't think it's an easier. So, yeah, it's in law bank because we all know not everyone follows laws and rules. That's why we have jails and all the dodgy people. Anyways, it's good to see. It's a good step in the right direction. And then that's a good step to the right direction, which is tomorrow. So uh, when you be coming this way, that way. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.